Chandra Oral and I'm at UMass Dartmouth where I am um, a math educator and my research is focused on teacher professional development and teacher knowledge. Um, what I'm doing with design-based research is right now I'm in a phase of doing basic research around teacher knowledge of proportions and it's with the larger goal of influencing the way that we work with teachers around um, teaching proportions. So I, I wanted to take a step back from doing traditional professional development because when we do traditional professional development, too often we're making an assumption that, that teachers don't know stuff. And I've worked with teachers for a long time and I know that teachers know a lot of stuff and a lot of what they know doesn't make it into their classroom practice. So I'm interested in understanding what they do know, how that does make it into their classroom practice, and then sort of figuring out how can we create professional development that helps the meaningful parts of what they know make it more easily into their classroom practice. So that's, that's what I'm doing now. So I've been, I've been thinking about design-based research off and on for about, um, I guess about a decade now. I started out as a member of the Design Based Research Collective um, in the early 2000s. And one of the things that, um, that excited me at that point was that Design Based Research was coming out of a tradition that had been very much homegrown and sort of in ways led to the, um, the birth of the learning sciences as a formalized field of educational study. What I'm seeing now, 10 years later, is people really like this idea of design-based research, even though I'm not sure that it's kept its definitions as well as it probably should. But it has, instead of opening up dialogues between fields, it's allowed us to stay siloed so that when educational technologists talk about design-based research, they may or may not be talking about the same thing that learning scientists are talking about. And I'm not sure that in math ed that people are talking about it at all. So I think that we still have a lot of work to do in um, unsiloing, if that can be a word, design-based research so that it's allowing us to talk between these fields instead of staying completely within a single field. Um, I think that moving in that direction would be very important. So I think that one of the things that could happen would be to open up um, formalized dialogues, so conferences or um, maybe intentional book um, editing opportunities that intentionally include people from fields that wouldn't necessarily talk to each other. So there's, there's a traditional, um, I don't want to call it a rift because that's too strong of a word, there's a traditional separation of educational technology and the learning sciences that's kind of crazy because the two are very much interested in very, very similar things. They just have different ways of going about understanding those things and approaching those things. So maybe having conferences or like I said, um, books that are published that intentionally include both voices so that there's a dialogue that starts to form around it. Another, another thing would be, um, we've, because, because the 90s was a very long time ago now, we've sort of lost some of the heritage of design-based research. So when I was in graduate school in the 90s, we had, um, examples from in the Jasper Woodbury project, in the, um, the work of Scar Damalian Berider that ultimately led to the Knowledge Forum, um, in Marsha Lynn's work that's still ongoing, of these, of, of these large-scale, multi-year design-based research projects. They weren't necessarily called that, but when you go back and you retroactively read that literature, you can clearly see these trajectories coming out. It's not just Anne Brown who's doing this work. There are a lot of people doing this work. Um, but we're not, we're not engaging our own graduate students in reading that history anymore because it seems old and outdated because Jasper Woodbury is on video discs. And why on earth would we have our students reading about the creation of video discs? Well, because it was actually about the creation of a theory of instruction and the instantiation of that theory in this product and what happened with this product over multiple iterations. So I think that some of what we need to do is go back to that earlier literature, and maybe it doesn't even have to go back that far. Um, some of my colleagues from the Design Based Research Collective have, continu have done, um, continued doing design based research uh, extensively, and maybe just looking at some of their trajectories from you know, 2000 to 2013 would, would give that same kind of snapshot view so that people can start to see what this looks like in practice over time because it takes time to do it. I think I would give two different pieces of advice. One is <clears throat> to um, to go back to some of those 
some of the studies that are already, already existing that are good examples of design-based research. <clears throat> so it could be the work that Anne Brown did around reciprocal teaching, it could be Jasper Woodbury, it could be Cecil, it could be um, Marshall Lynn's work which has gone under several, several different names. It could be one of the newer projects that's come up, but go and read that and see what it looks like to have a trajectory of work over time. I think understanding a trajectory of work is very, very difficult for an incoming graduate student, whether it's design-based research or not. <clears throat> but to dissect that and say, what is a trajectory and how do small studies build into answering a larger question? Um, I think no matter what kind of research they want to do, that's really good for them to do. The other thing is to think about um, so your, this is your research question, this is what you want to know. What little tiny studies will help you get there? Because you're not going to, you're not going to answer this question. That's too big. You don't have you know, 10 years and millions of dollars. So what little question would give you a little bit of an answer that then you could build another question on and another question on, which is about learning to build your own research trajectory.